Hi, good day everyone. Our topic is all about plate tectonics. From the deepest ocean trench to the tallest mountain, plate tectonics explains the features and movement of Earth's surface in the present and the past. Our country is blessed with so many land features such as mountains and volcanoes. These features can be sources of different minerals for agricultural purposes. For example, we have the majestic and world-renowned Mayon Volcano. Because of its activity, it produces fertile slopes and plains which are used by the locals to grow their crops. Also found in the northeastern coast of Luzon, we have the Sierra Madre mountain range which is home to many endemic of flora and fauna. Have you ever wondered why our country is endowed with this kind of geologic features? Well, if your answer is yes, then this topic will help you find the answer to your question. Let us start our topic by answering the question, what is plate tectonics? Earth's lithosphere consists of layers, the crust and the upper part of the mantle. The crust is made up of a variety of solid rocks like sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. It has an average density of 2.8 gram per cubic centimeter, and its thickness ranges from 5 to 50 kilometers. The crust is thickest in a part where a relatively young mountain is present and thinnest along the ocean floor. According to this figure, there are two kinds of crust. The thicker but less dense continental crust and the oceanic crust, which is relatively thinner but denser than continental crust. According to this plate tectonic model, the entire lithosphere of the Earth broken into numerous segments called plates. As shown in the figure, there are seven relatively large plates and a number of smaller ones, including the Philippine plate. This plate moves very slowly but constantly, and this movement is called tectonics. Thus, the theory of moving plates is called plate tectonics. Tectonic is derived from the word tecton, which means carpenter or builder. Tectonic plates have been used by scientists to describe the movement of the lithosphere. However, this term is now widely used for describing the physical plates rather than the movement. Tectonic plates, also called lithospheric plates, are massive, irregular slabs of solid rock that envelop the surface of the Earth. Before we study more about plate tectonics, let us discuss first one of the consequences of moving crustal plates which is crucial in studying plate tectonics. This is called earthquake. You have learned in your science class that an earthquake releases three of seismic waves primary waves, secondary waves, and long surface waves. The primary waves and the secondary waves travel into the Earth's interior while the long surface waves travel on the surface of the Earth. These waves travel in different velocities. Thus, they do not arrive at a seismic recording station at the same time. The farther the recording instrument is from the focus, the greater the difference in arrival time of the first P wave compared to the first S wave. But what is focus and what is epicenter? Focus is the point within the Earth along the rupturing geological fault where an earthquake occurred, while epicenter is the point on the Earth's surface vertically above the hypocenter or focus. How to locate the epicenter of an earthquake? In order to locate the epicenter of an earthquake, you need to determine the time interval between the arrival of primary wave and secondary wave on the seismograms from at least three different stations. And then you have to measure the interval to the closest second and then use a graph to convert the SP interval to the epicenter distance. For example, the recording stations are Batangas, Puerto Princesa, and Davao. The second column is the time difference in the arrival time of P-wave and S-wave, expressed in second. 
44.8 seconds, 32 seconds, and 38.4 seconds in Batangas, Puerto Princesa, and Davao respectively. How to compute the distance of epicenter from the station? You will use the formula D is equal to TD divided by 8 seconds times 100 kilometers. TD stands for the time difference in the arrival time of P wave and S wave express in second. Using the formula, let us substitute the given for Batangas. D, 44.8 seconds divided by 8 seconds times 100 kilometers. The answer is 560 kilometers. Do the same step using Puerto Princesa and Davao. In this case, Puerto Princesa is equal to 400 kilometers while Davao City is equal to 480 kilometers. Before we shall locate the epicenter of an earthquake, we need to convert kilometer to centimeter using a scale. In this case, 1.5 centimeters is equal to 200 kilometers. Let us convert the distance of epicenter from Matangas Station. 560 kilometers times 1.5 centimeters divided by 200 kilometers is equal to 4.2 centimeters. Using the same scale, the distance of epicenter from Puerto Princesa is 3 centimeters, while in Davao is 3.6 centimeters. On a map, circles are drawn around the seismic station. The radii of the circles are scaled to the estimated distance from the station to the earthquake. The three circles will intersect at one point to locate the earthquake. What do you think is the importance of determining the location of the epicenter of an earthquake? Determining the location of earthquake epicenters plays a vital role in laying the foundations of plate tectonics. Let us see how early geologists use a plotted positions of earthquake epicenters throughout the world in conceptualizing crustal movements. Let us trace the approximate locations of several earthquake clusters. The figure shows the map of earthquake distribution. The red dots represent earthquakes epicenter. How are earthquakes distributed in the map? Earthquakes are not randomly distributed around the earth. Rather, they are located in distinct zones which can be related to the margins of tectonic plates on the Earth's surface. The figure shows the distribution of areas of most frequent earthquake activity. The active plate boundaries are superimposed on this map. There is a striking correspondence between the occurrence of earthquake activity and the boundaries of plates. The world's greatest earthquake belt, the Circum Pacific Seismic Belt, is found around the rim of the Pacific Ocean, where about 81% of our planet's largest earthquakes occur. It has earned the nickname Ring of Fire. In this figure, where do you think are the earthquakes located? That is correct. Some are located near the edges of the continents. Some are in the mid-continents, while others are in the oceans. Another question is, why is it important for us to identify areas which are prone to earthquakes? If your answer is, so that necessary precautions could be done if ever you're living in one of those areas, then you are correct. Let us study this figure that shows the map of active volcanoes. The red areas represent the presence of volcanoes. How are active volcanoes distributed in the map? Volcanoes are not randomly distributed. Majority of them are found along the edges of some continents. Volcanic activity is widespread over the earth, but tends to be concentrated in specific locations. Volcanoes are most likely to occur along the margins of tectonic activities. 
especially in subduction zones where oceanic plates dive under continental plates. And where are they located? As I have said a while ago, majority of them are found along the edges of some continents, particularly in the western coast of North and South America, East and Southeast of Asia. This time, let us now compare the location of majority of earthquake and the location of volcanoes around the world. Above is a picture which tells us the positions of volcanoes and earthquakes on the earth. The yellow areas represent the volcanoes while the red dots represent the earthquake epicenters. As you can see, almost all the records show that volcanoes are formed on fault lines and earthquakes happen on fault lines. Earthquake epicenters and volcanoes are located at the same place. Lastly, let us study the map of mountain ranges. The brown portions indicate mountain ranges of the world. Now, how will you relate the distribution of mountain ranges with the distribution of earthquake epicenters and volcanoes? Mountain ranges are found in places where volcanoes and or earthquake epicenters are also located. Thanks for watching my dear students.